My name is Cecilianu, and today I'm going to show you how to create a fishy background. So what I'm going to be doing is mixing my custom color. So I know I've given every table custom colors to mix. You guys are going to pass it around and mix it just like I showed you. And you want to just really thoroughly mix it up and it should be like a, a beautiful opal sparkly color similar to what you see here. All right, so you really wanna mix it, mix it, and make sure everyone gets a turn mixing, of course, okay? And I'll show you the best way to paint. So what I like to do is create a little border. So it's gonna be a rectangle. So I do this first, and I do it very close to my edge. So I want you to notice how close to my edge I am. Now the reason for the border is this way, when we go to put these on the drying rack later, we can handle them without getting our fingers too painty. So that's the whole idea behind it, is to kind of keep our tables a little neat. All right, so now that I have my border together, what I'm gonna do is something that I call lawnmower strips. So I dip and I'm just gonna pull down and then pull up, just like that. And I'm going to go pretty slow, take my time, all right, and this is going to promote thorough coverage. So it's not a wild way of painting, it's a slow and controlled method. And the great thing about this method of painting is that it dries as you go, because your hand actually will fan the picture as you go along. So I'm just continuing here. And about halfway. Now, we're gonna be using this background for several different projects. You'll see me using this um, for my mer person picture, and also for my puffer fish scene, and also for my fish scene. So I tend to do a lot of under the sea projects when we come back to school in August, because I just feel like it's still summer. So I'm not quite ready to jump into fall yet. I still like to take my time doing some fishy projects. I also use these for my sharks to celebrate shark week and things like that. So once I've gone all the way this way, what I think I'm gonna do is a second coat of paint, but I'm gonna go the opposite direction. And I just want you to see how nice and uh, opaque this has become. So it was a bit translucent before. Those are those big words I'm always saying. Translucent means that a little bit of light can pass through it. Transparent would be that uh, all the light can pass through it. So that would be like a, a window. So, but translucent means that a little bit of light can pass through. So if you look at the difference between this and that, you're going to really notice you, it's much lighter because light is passing through it but the second coat helps it become more opaque, which means that no light can pass through it. And if you're at home, you can go crazy doing as many coats as you would like, but I'm just gonna stop at two here. And I just want you to notice that I take my time. I'm never in a rush when it comes to making art. I always take my time. And I'm always gonna work faster than my students too because I have lots of experience doing this, so it makes sense. But you will notice that this dries pretty quick. I'm just using temper paint. Um, I mixed a solid color blue with some uh, sparkle um, silver and also some uh, other silver paint. So there were like three different types of paints mixed in there. This is something I really enjoy doing with my students. I, I really enjoy teaching them how to mix their own custom colors. So again, a custom color is a unique color that you create by uh, mixing different colors together. And what makes it unique is that, you know, every table was given the same colors, except that there's different amounts in each tray. So the colors are gonna be slightly different from each other. And I can just keep adding layers to my heart's content, but I think I am gonna stop here. So now I'm gonna show you my next step. I know you guys are gonna have fun with this. So I have bubble wrap, and one side of the bubble wrap is bumpy. Okay, so that would be like this side here. The other side is flat. 
So I want to make sure that I'm painting on my bumpy side, not on my flat side. So you're going to take a good look at your bubble wrap and just, you know, figure out which side it is that you're doing. And I'm going to do a sweep of white paint on here. Now, when I do the bubble wrap, I want to work pretty quick, okay? I want to make sure I don't smear, so I just put it down, I give it one, two, three taps maybe, and then I quickly pull it up, okay? If I put too much paint on there, it's going to not create this really neat effect. And if I accidentally move it, it's going to end up looking a little bit sloppy. So I just want to pick a few areas around my picture to put this paint. So this is a printing process. So this is a type of printmaking. Printmaking is when we're using an object to print. So you can print with so many different things. Um, a lot of time when I do printmaking with my students, we're carving into a foam plate and then we're putting ink on top. So that's another type of printmaking. Print, printmaking can mean so many things, but you can also print with household items. So that's what I'm showing you right now. And I'll show you a ghost print. So this is a real print still, but if I go and I don't paint on it again and I print, that's called a ghost print, okay? So sometimes the ghost prints come out better than the originals. Sometimes the originals are just too thick for their own good. So a ghost print will really help it come together. So I'm just going around having some fun Again, I do this project with, um, I would say, um, second through fifth grade is going to be making the same kind of background for their fishy projects with slight variations, of course, you know, with more challenges for my older students. So I'm just going around doing my bubble wrap and now I have something even more fun to show you. Hopefully you think it's fun. I think it's fun. So I have my white paint right here and what I'm gonna do just a toilet paper too. Actually, this is not toilet paper. This looks like a paper towel. It's really nice and um, it's really nice and thick too. So this is a lot of fun. I'm just making a bubble chain. And then in part two of this video, I'm going to show you how to use this background for multiple different projects. So I'll have more than just a part two. There's going to be a lot of parts because the same background is going to be used for many things. But this is just a quick way to make a really fun mixed media background for your art project. So if you're at home doing this, um, you can really use, you can play around with things that you have around your house. So another fun thing to print with is um, Legos. I've seen people printing with Legos. If you have um, a tool shed, sometimes uh, different tools that you have in there might be good for printing with as well. So I just encourage you to have fun with this. All right, and I'm going to end the video here. All right, goodbye everyone.